Okay, so we're going to calculate sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive values, and negative predictive values in SPSS. And I deb debated about whether or not to do it the easy way or the hard way, but I went ahead and give you, I'm giving you the hard way because um, it's a little bit more complicated, but it, in, the, in the long run, if you ever have to do this analysis, you're going to thank me because it is much easier if you have large data sets. So for a small data set, it's easy to just do do it by hand, right? You have your diagnostic test and whether or not the person tested positive, and then you have the truth, whether, whether or not they're positive for disease. And this is assuming that we know the truth. Typically, this might be a gold standard uh, test, and we're testing another diagnostic test against it. Um, so this person, person one, has a positive test and is positive for the disease. Next person is positive for the test and positive for the disease. We do that as many times as we see that in our contingency table. So I'm going to show you this, uh, what it looks like in a real life contingency table and how to set it up in SPSS. And then I'll show you the analysis actually using SPSS. But I'm going to show you this in the, in the document first. And I'll post this document as well. All right, so here's cell A, cell B, cell C, and cell D, right? just like in, in the video. And here's our truth, we have positive and negative, and here's our test, and we have positive and negative. So this represents 26 people who tested positive and positive. So I would have to go up here and do this 26 times. Positive, 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 all the way down to 26. Here, I would have to do positive, negative, three times. Then I would have to do negative, positive, eight times, and then do negative, negative, 23 times. You can see that for 60 people, even that could be, you know, you can make mistakes, and I guarantee I made a few mistakes before I got this data set set up. Um, but it's much easier to do it this way. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into, uh, actually, variable view. Let me change that. In variable, variable view, create four variables. Sorry, I haven't quite edited this. Um, doing it on the fly. Uh, you're going to create four variables. The first one you're going to call cell label, the next one diagnostic test, the next one truth, and the last one count. Okay, and I'll explain what these are. This is what they look like when you go back to data view. Okay, so in SPSS we're going to do this row by row. So one is going to be positive and two is negative. So the first row represents cell one. Okay, so here's cell one, positive, positive. Okay, so we're going to go here, one, is equal to A, and looking at the original contingency table, we know that it's positive and positive. So we're going to say diagnostic test is equal to 1, which is positive, and the truth is equal to 1, which is positive. Okay? Then next is cell 2, or B, up here, and we know that it's positive and negative. All right? So we're going to say diagnostic test is 1, and truth is 2. So we're going to say diagnostic test is 1 and truth is 2. Then we're going to go to the third cell and we're going to say negative and positive. So we're going to say 2, then 1. And then in the last one, we're going to say negative and negative. So that's 2 and 2. So cell D is 2 and 2, right? Okay. So then, we'll, we'll go and label these in a minute, but then we have to figure out the counts, right? So we have 26, then 3, then 8, then 23. So down the count, we're going to go 26, then 3, then 8, and then 23. 26, 3, 8, 23. Yes, I did that right. Okay. So then we go into variable view, and we're going to click on value labels, and we're going to click cell label, and we're going to do, and I'll show you this in SPSS, actually. Let me move over there, and I'll show you. Okay, so really quickly, you go in here, and in the first cell, I have A, B, C, and D, right? So 1 is equal to A, 2 is equal to B, 3 is equal to C, 4 is equal to D. Say okay. Here, I'm just saying 1 is equal to positive, 2 is equal to negative. Then I have 1 is equal to positive and 2 is equal to negative. And then this last one, I don't have anything. Actually, these um, are, sorry, I should be clicking over here. These are nominal variables, nominal, and this last one should be scale. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing we have to do is we have to go and we have to tell the computer, sorry, we have to go to data and tell the computer to weight our cases. So we have to click weight cases by count. And you have to click this button before you can move the count over. Let me reset it and show you that again. Weight cases by, select count, and we say OK. And here's our output. And it just says we've weighted our cases by count. And that's all we've done. All right, so the first thing I want to do is to analyze. I'm going to go to descriptive statistics. I'm going to go to cross tabs. Everything keeps popping up on my other screen. Sorry, let me reset this. All right, I want to bring uh, diagnostic test to the row. I want to bring truth to the column. I'm going to click cells. And I'm just going to click column percentages. And I'm going to say continue, and I'm going to say OK. All right, now let me switch to the document because I have everything highlighted there. So I've done that. I've weight cased it by. Weight cases by, <coughs> excuse me, count, cross tabs, bring diagnostic tests to the rows, columns to the truth, click the column, and then here we have sensitivity is our percent within truth. So 76.5% is my sensitivity, these are my true, true positives, and my specificity is 88.5% true negatives. These are my false positives, which is also called a type 1 error that we'll talk about later on. And then this is my false negatives, which is also called a type 2 error, which we'll talk about later on. So that gives me my sensitivity and my specificity. Now, let me go back, and we're going to run the positive predictive values and negative predictive values. So I should do it from output. Okay, so now I'm just going to go to this dialog recall, or I could go back to analyze descriptives. Let me stay with what we did in the in the document. Go to cross tabs. Everything stays the same. I'm just going to go to cells. And now I'm going to click row percentages. <coughs> Excuse me. Click continue. Click OK. And then we have, now we have all the percentages. And let me go back to the document. All right, so we go to analyze, descriptive statistics, cross tabs. We've done that. We've gone back to cells. Now we just click row. And then we can look at our output. Now, this was our sensitivity from before, 76.5%, but now this is our positive predictive value. This is the percent within the test. 89.7% um, is the probability that a positive test means that they have the disease, and the negative predictive value, the probability that the negative test means they don't have the disease, that's 742 And then here we actually have the prevalence. This is the proportion of the individuals in a population that have the disease. And that is how you do it.